underway with the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video for the 20th day of April 2023. I'm Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm with WFMJ, the NBC affiliate in Youngstown, Ohio. This is the video we call Weather for Weather Geeks. It's basically my chance to take a deep dive into the weather that I don't have time to talk about on TV. And so we typically talk about the short range, the long range. We talk about some other science-y things sometimes in this video. But I wanted to start out this evening with a quick review of where we've been in April because we had another 80-degree day today, our fifth in the month of April. And we had a couple of 79s on the board as well. Uh, five 80-degree days with the possibility of number six coming tomorrow. The most we've had in April since... 2010, and for the month, we're running 5.9 degrees above the average when you factor in both highs and lows. Did you see some of the footage from the Plain States last night? Unfortunately, we had some fatalities in Oklahoma with some tornadic thunderstorms, some really wild motions with the uh, tornadic activity, especially in Oklahoma. We had uh, kind of uh, storms taking a very unusual path uh, more to the north and then eventually back to the northwest. Usually tornadoes don't travel backwards, if you will, from anywhere in the easterly direction to the westerly direction, but those storms kind of had a mind of their own last evening. That whole system is uh, coming eastward, and a skinny tornado watch still in effect for parts of Wisconsin and Illinois. Severe thunderstorm watches extend down through St. Louis, parts of the Ozarks, and down into southeastern Oklahoma. This is the uh, system heading our way for tomorrow, and with the midday update today, the uh, Storm Prediction Center did... Uh, upgrade eastern Ohio and western PA to a low end one on our one to five severe weather scale. Risk for severe weather. This is a wind threat tomorrow afternoon. Now it's going to be very spotty. Most of us won't see thunderstorm activity and most of us won't have to worry about severe weather tomorrow, but anything that does manage to get up on its feet tomorrow afternoon could be strong and gusty. And that window is only a couple of hours long, really, probably somewhere between like two and four, two and five in the afternoon on our Friday. This front's going to be running out of gas as it comes east. So clouds will increase, shower, maybe a thunderstorm as we get into the mid to late afternoon. We'll probably get a break before the steadier rain then uh, overwhelms the area, overspreads the area, if you will, um, by daybreak on Saturday. And uh, yeah, the weekend's going to get off to a soggy start. This will be the wettest part of the whole weekend on Saturday morning for the first few hours of daylight. It'll be raining pretty much everywhere. Now we'll get into more of a scattered shower Regime once we get past, say, 11 o'clock, noon, 1 o'clock. For the rest of the afternoon, I think there'll be some dry intervals. It's going to be chillier, but probably not a lot of rain falling from the sky. Maybe even a little sunshine trying to work in towards 5 or 6 p.m. Showers uh, will be a possibility for a time early Saturday evening, and then we'll get a break. And then with this next trough of low pressure pivoting through on Sunday, uh, we'll see maybe a, a spotty shower regime for the second half of the day on Sunday. But the bigger story Sunday will be the chill. With the clouds thickening up, we're going to struggle to get out of the 40s on Sunday. Same thing on Monday. All right, so how much rain are we expecting between now and Saturday night? Our model consensus, kind of like it was last evening, is between a half an inch and an inch. I still think that's pretty good range. Some of us may end up on the higher end of that. Some of us towards the lower end. Uh, this won't be enough to cause widespread flooding problems or anything like that. But some of our more responsive creeks, like Eagle Creek in, in Trumbull County. Flood warnings issued all the time for Eagle Creek near Braceville. I could see that being the case before the weekend is through, but that's that's the exception. Most of us will not have to worry about too much rain. As far as recent trends in precipitation, this is a look at precipitation percent of average over the last month, taking us back through the last week to 10 days of March. You can see we're in the greens and blues here. We're above average when we look back a month into the past. When we only look back over the last couple of weeks, it's been pretty dry. But long term, we're doing okay. I am a little bit concerned, though, about the longer term forecast going forward. Um, today, the Climate Prediction Center put out their initial May outlook for precipitation and uh, temperatures. I, I do agree with their overall precipitation map here, showing odds favoring a drier than average month around the Great Lakes, wetter than average in the southeast. And I am concerned that this trend will continue into the summer season. If you've been watching Weather Geeks over the last uh, well, handful of weeks, I've been mentioning off and on the coming El Nino, which is likely to be pretty strong. That's a warm tongue of water in the Pacific, influencing weather patterns downstream across North America. Uh, I think this is going to be a pretty strong El Nino. Now, it may not peak in strength until next winter, um, but it's going to be coming on strong this summer. And a stronger El Nino would tilt the odds in favor of of a drier summer around here. It'll be pretty wet if that comes to fruition out across the Corn Belt. But across eastern Ohio and up into the northeast, uh, based on what's happened with El Nino's in the past, uh, we would uh, favor 
drier than average conditions. As far as May goes, though, uh, temperature-wise, uh, this was the CPC outlook today for May, showing odds favoring warmer than average temperatures for the month in the south and along the eastern seaboard and back towards our regions as well. Now, I think May will start out cool, but warmer trends uh, will probably take hold as we get into the middle of the month. But the first week of May does not look particularly warm. One thing we'll be watching as we go towards the summer season and trying to figure out what kind of flavor of, of summer we'll have, ocean water temperatures aside from El Nino, our El Nino region is right here. You can see the water is really warming rapidly up against South America. This is our El Nino zone. This is where all the blue has been over the last few years when we've had La Nina. Now we're going to have the opposite of that, El Nino. Now, with El Nino, typically we don't see this kind of configuration across the northern Pacific. This is called the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. Um, right now it's in the negative phase, which means it's warm over here and cold water is banked up against North America. Usually we see the opposite phase of that when we get into El Nino. If this were not to flip, if the PDO, the Pacific uh, Decadal Oscillation, were to stay negative in uh, tandem with that El Nino, it would serve to maybe cancel out some of the effects of El Nino and maybe our summer would not be quite as dry and also our summer would then probably be warmer because El Nino favors a cooler summer around here. Um, so if we don't see this pattern in the northern Pacific flip, El Nino may not be quite as much of a player in the summer. But if this does flip, if you start to see these waters warming along the west coast of North America and cooling out here, El Nino will probably take more of the driver's seat and have a bigger influence on our summer weather. And that means trends towards drier and cooler. Of course, in the summertime, no matter what's going on in the Pacific, we always have hot days. But we're talking about the overall picture as far as the summer goes. Uh, if El Nino takes the driver's seat, uh, I would not look for any sort of stifling summer around here with big prolonged heat waves uh, more than a couple of days at a time. All right, that's it for me tonight on this Thursday evening. Coming up on Friday, we'll talk about any storms that we were tracking throughout the afternoon. We'll talk about the weekend more and a look ahead towards the cool pattern that will uh, linger into the final stages of April and the start of May. So I look forward to seeing you then.